female talking to me? Am I no, 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 no. Am I tripping? Am I tripping on all my time out? Is a female talking to me right now? Is a fucking female talking to me? I'll get my ass. I don't go to your tennis I'll fuck you in the ass. Please fucking bleed, bitch. I swear to God, shut the fuck up. Content creation has changed. Now, I don't want to sound like some old person making another one of those back in my day statements because I'm only a teenager, that wouldn't make any sense. But sometimes I miss old social media. It was quiet, it wasn't full of drama, and instead of me logging onto YouTube to see that DanTDM has uploaded another Minecraft video, it's who's had beef with who, who's sold out to what company, Who's collabed with another big streamer and caused the most fuss inside another, yet, giant content creator house where all seven of them in this house are having a giant argument, a million clips being formed off of that. It's just... horrible. It seems to me that since the pandemic in early 2020, some sort of switch has been flipped when it comes to social media, and I think that it's obvious to most that the meta for getting popularity has changed. It's simply a battle of who can put on the best fake character as an act for the audience? Who can do the most loud and obnoxious thing next? Who can make themselves the biggest punching bag to draw more hate towards their accounts? Aiden Ross, I Shall Speed, Jack Doherty, Neon, and even Jinxie. I hate to break it to you, but this isn't how they are in real life, or at least how they were in real life. All of the people that I just mentioned, and maybe others that I just simply can't show their clips on YouTube because of how bad they are, or maybe I just don't know about them, they all have one thing in common, and that's that they're all at the top. They're all the biggest streamers, they're all the biggest names when it comes to popularity on the internet, so it shows that this new meta that I just explained it works. It completely works. In one of my first ever videos in this format, I covered Nikocado Avocado, and in that video I broke down and spoke about the fact that in case people didn't know, it was a character. People like him were sort of the step into this new meta, where they were exploring the idea of, if I publicly humiliate myself, that will gain more attention. And yeah, they were like the first step into this type of idea, and from then on it's just been more advanced and more embraced by almost everyone now, it seems, whenever you look at a big content creator on the internet. Now, I'm not even going to make fun of them. Again, in my Nikocado Avocado video, I explained that although I personally on the internet would like to be known for me and not put on one of these acts, all of these people that are doing it, since they're at the top and since they're gaining more views, they're earning millions. Nikocado Avocado is a millionaire, just like any other YouTuber who gets a million views each video and then stems off into other social media platforms. They're doing really well for themselves, so no matter what you do, there's nothing that's going to stop them from doing this if it's giving them bank, if it's giving them a lot of money. All of this stuff for these people is life-changing. It's life-changing for them because of their big audience. But that's where the problem begins to stem. Their audience. And who's in sight of that audience. You might be thinking that if someone my age, which is within my mid-teens, is able to recognise this is all fake and therefore not have any interest to watch it, then why does it have so many views in the first place? And that's just because, while everything is in the world is advancing, technology, society, and stuff on the internet, more and more children in the newer generations are going to be exposed to this kind of stuff. I have a little sister who, let's just say, in comparison to the age in which I got a phone, she got one a hell of a lot earlier which is another prime example in, it's not even bad parenting at this point, because at this point, it is an average age for a child to have that sort of device. And I know that we've all done it before, even though all of these websites and all of these clips that you're seeing all this from are from streamers that you may be thinking, just because they swear and have an adult theme does not mean that children will not be able to gain access to this. Everyone's done it before. You've made a social media account as a kid, lying about your age because you want access to that social media account. Whether it's with YouTube to view an age-restricted video, or whether it's any other 18-plus website that teenagers are doing, because, I mean, teenagers will be teenagers. Nothing is going to stop the younger generations from gaining access to the stuff and being that audience for all of these bigger streamers and boosting their view counts because of all this stuff. There was a hilarious Kai Sinat clip that I saw, and if you don't know who Kai Sinat is, basically, he's another one of these big streamers, and 
His streams are interesting, to say the least. A big trend on TikTok right now is just irony and satirical jokes, so it's stuff that's either been memes in the past or things that people joke on. It's how words such as goofy and silly got back into the rounds, because it's things that in the olden days of the internet people would use and people would speak with. So while there used to be memes like Ohio and stuff, when it was funny, stuff like Ohio is now used as a meme because it's cringe, not because of the fact it's actually funny. A lot of stuff to do with streamers like Kaisenat and Aiden Ross and words like Ohio Riz and Phantom Tax come from Kaisenat. And it's all, to put it simply, brain rot. Kaisenat in this clip was called out for having a younger audience, obviously. And he tried to defend himself. He was saying stupid things along the lines of, I make content for grown ass men. Like, no, you do not, bro. I don't know who, I don't know who thinks and believes that I make content for kids, but you're dumb as shit if you think I'm making con- I make con the content that I make is for me and other grown ass niggas, bro. If kids tune in, you gotta call their parents, gang. That ain't me. That's what I be talking. You can't blame me. If kids is tuning in also, if you do your fucking research, you dumb bitch, type in Constantinette on Twitch. Nigga. Click on my stream and, and see if it warns you to be 18 plus to continue further watching. Nigga, I can call up my Twitch rep and say, hey, can you please take off that warning for my shit? But guess what? I leave it. Wanna know why? Because hopefully you 18 plus watching it. It literally warns you before you click on my stream. If kids are being exposed to this stuff more and more and when they are younger and younger, it is going to become very dangerous. And the reason that I made this video was, again, because of the neon stuff that happened a few days ago. He got banned off a kick in that clip that I showed in the intro because of something terrible that he said. And the reason that I'm saying this is because Neon, although he is older than me, I have no idea how old he is, but I know that he's not in his 20s yet. That is a very young person. I am younger than him, but I can recognize his mindset. He is very young. A lot of these streamers that you see doing this for attention, they're in their 20s, they're off doing their own thing in their life now, but they're getting younger and younger as the generations pass down and all of these views and all of the, you know, social media in itself evolves. Just another little thing I wanted to add into the video, as I was editing this video the same day that I was trying to do it, another piece of drama has just happened on the internet with Jinxie, Stable, Ronaldo and Clicks, which are basically just, again, three content creators and Jinxie did a 1v2 against them in Rainbow Six Siege and Clicks is another one of these content creators that follows this path of doing anything for attention, but he does it in a different way. He follows a lot of scripts to cause this drama. Everything that he does is planned. He does annoying, fake online relationships and stuff. And basically, long story short, once Clicks and Stable Ronaldo eventually won this 2v1 against Jinxie, he did this thing where he posted a photo of Twitter of Jinxie's now current girlfriend, which is an OnlyFans model, by the way, having his Fortnite code signed onto her tip. And then yeah, just posted it to his Twitter after he won. And again, this this entire thing, I mean, there's a ton of people on the internet on Jinxie's side, there's a ton of people on the internet on Clix's side. I just think both of them are equally pathetic at this point, even if this isn't an actual faked drama. It's just stupid drama in and of it itself. People are saying that Clix is childish for this. Yeah, but at the end of the day, who is Jinxie dating? That's right, an OnlyFans model. There's not really a lot of sympathy that can be given to him either. And I'm just worried that when all of this content is exposed to these younger people, if people like Neon are beginning to get very popular for this stuff, well, I used to look up to YouTubers and like their content because I thought they were kind people and enjoyed the stuff I was watching. If this is the type of stuff that kids enjoy watching, they're going to adopt that personality. They're going to take it as something that they want to do. And again, I don't want to sound like an old, grumpy, boring person, but if there's influence and it's negative towards a kid, that it's just not good in and of itself, and that's not hard to recognise. You don't want kids going around acting like Neon. You don't want kids going around acting like Kaisen and whatever the hell he does on his very grown-ass streams, by the way. Don't worry, he makes content for grown men. But that isn't the only problem that comes from this new meta that's been going around on social media. It's the fact that there's always someone going further up the ladder. The ladder of who just did the biggest thing. 
Picture this as a ladder of severity. Someone does something really bad, and the next person who gets an even more famous clip from that last person did something a bit more bad than the last person. When is the line gonna be drawn, and when is that ladder going to end and get to its place where it needs to be? I have a feeling that I don't see an end for this ladder right now. Who knows what will be done next when it comes to all of this attention seeking and all of this terrible format of the new internet mail. Someone could genuinely really get hurt. Someone has genuinely really got hurt. And I just really don't want it to stem into something really bad to the point where what used to be a safe space, social media and the internet, used to be an entertaining platform for people is now a competition, which involves society, it involves people, it involves families, social lives, everything being hurt just because they want to be the next big thing. My honest suggestion on how to approach this? Find smaller content creators. They are a lot more likely to be reliable. No, that statement wasn't targeted, but again, I mean, you guys have done that for me. A lot of people have found my content over the past few weeks because of the stuff I've been making, and all of the comments have been severely nice. And my biggest suggestion is that we just go out and find more people like us. If you want to watch that type of content that I just explained, that's fine. You're usually most likely a younger person, and I get that. But I just don't see the influence from it going in any good direction. So if we want to give anyone attention, let's just give it to all of the smaller people that are up and coming, and we believe that there's genuine, good-hearted intentions from them. We need people that are real to themselves, that act like themselves. And again, I didn't want to compare it to myself, but this is just another special thank you from me specifically for the support on the past few weeks of my channel. Let's just try and endorse some content that's made by some real people. You know what I mean? I don't think that should be too hard. Me personally, I've been looking to the most real people I can find on the internet for content and stuff, and I try my best to keep true to myself and promise for that if this YouTube thing does more for me, or if anyone's watching me, I'll never do anything like that. I can reassure you. If you enjoyed this video and you aren't subscribed already, I've heard that asking actually helps the numbers, so if you want to, I would really appreciate that. If you don't want to, that's fine. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.